Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a double header and if you guys have been following my channel as of late, you know that I went through a no by July recently and um, I made it through 98% of the month and the last couple days just ended in complete and utter failure. Crash and burn on the no by July. Uh, and in fact, I've already failed no by August too, so I'm just I'm just uh, not doing very well at this. But uh, what ended up happening was I found a very rare fragrance that I've been searching for literally for years, and I've been unable to find it. I'm not going to tell you guys the name yet because there's still an unboxing to come on that one. And it was worth breaking the no by July. And then the very next day, I was approached by uh, a collector, uh, someone that wants to remain anonymous. And I was offered this very expensive perfume for what I thought was a very fair price. And I couldn't say no. Uh, and I actually made room for it already. It's going to go right here. Can you guys guess what it is? Uh, it, it is a little bit of a madness. Uh, let me unbox it. Here's the box that it comes in. I have actually talked about this fragrance on my channel before. So I've worn it. I have um, even done what I would consider as close to a full review as I could do with a sample. Uh, it wasn't really a sample. It was a travel discovery atomizer, okay? And so if you go to my channel, and once I pull out the fragrance, you'll know. If you go to my channel, and you go to um, playlists, you can actually go to uh, comparison and individual reviews, and you'll be able to find the uh, review that I did on this one. And I basically called it, so here she is, here she is in all her glory, let's take a look at her, let's hold her in my hands, do you guys know what it is? Um, I said I'd probably never buy anything else from this brand, and here I am, uh, buying something else from this brand. To be fair, I got a very, very fair price, this is a $3,000 perfume, okay, I didn't pay three. I didn't pay two. I didn't pay fifteen hundred. Uh, so keep going lower. All right. I got a very fair price on this. And thank you, by the way, to the person that approached me. Um, it is. Um, it's a fragrance that I've worn, and I know, and I like. I know I like it. I said it was a Roja wrapped in a Guerlain, and it is Roja's. Hey, wait a minute. There's wrapping in there. That was. That was. Uh, let me. Let me get this out of here. Let's try this again, shall we? This is, the, everyone in the community calls it Hout Lux, but it's actually just Roja. This is Roja's signature scent uh, in all her purple cap glory. Um, let me take out the bottle so you can see it. Yes, it does actually have, yes, it does actually have gold flakes in it. Yes, that is true. Somewhat uh, ridiculous, but true, I must say. And um, there she is. Yes. So, if you know anything about Roja, you know that he loves his Shifra fragrances, his Shifras. And this is a uh, Shifra that was made to be a signature scent for him. And, um, you know, it is, it will remind you of classic Shifras from the past, okay? There are some, um, there are some, you know, whenever you smell this, if you've never smelled it before, the biggest note to me, the, the main player is that it's a very labdanum heavy Shifra fragrance, okay? So it has all of the elements of a, of a Shifra that someone like Roja would like. Uh, so if you, if you know Roja's, um, if you know Roja's tastes, okay, and you know he loves classical fragrances from the past, you will smell a little bit of Mitsuko in there. Absolutely, you will. Um, but this has its own little twist to it. There's huge amounts of florals. Uh, Jasmine from Grass, Ylang Ylang, May Rose, there's a beautiful bergamot top, and there's this, um, there's this resinous 
whirlwind of notes that you also get in Majestic Oud, by the way. I think this and Majestic uh, Oud, he writes it Aoud, A-O-U-D, share some similarities in the way that they were constructed. Now, they discontinued Majestic Aoud, uh, Majestic Oud. Um, he wrote it with A-O-U-D because he basically... Um, said that that's how the people in the Middle East pronounce it, or that's how it's written in the Middle East. <laughs> Excuse me. And, um, you know, when I, I've worn both, I'm going to do a, a review on Majestic Oud very soon. I need to wear it a couple more times, okay? Uh, but this is uh, vanilla in the base, amber, real ambergris in the base, heavy labdanum. Actually, I would probably say if you're a labdanum lover, this is probably one of the best labdanum fragrances you can buy, along with Le Leon. Now, someone recently told me that 31 Rue Cambeau has a great labdanum note. I have a decant, thanks to Rachel, but I haven't smelled it yet. Um, but as far as labdanum goes, uh, this is one of the best labdanum fragrances I've smelled. Roja loves labdanum. Is it overpriced? Absolutely, freaking lutely it's overpriced. Even the heavily discounted price that I paid, it's overpriced. Uh, it was slashed in a third. It probably should have been slashed in half again. This should probably be a $500 bottle, honestly. And that's even that is outrageous. Um, but he makes only a certain amount per year. I think he makes something like 250 for the whole world for the year is the selling point. He makes them on his birthday. It's, it's an insane story, honestly. I can't believe I even have a bottle, to be honest with you. It's absolutely insane. Um, the florals in here are beautiful. The resinousness is beautiful. And, you know, I wore this on vacation in the 100-degree heat in Arizona, 110-degree heat in Arizona, uh, last month, two months ago. And, um, you know, I found myself really craving it. You know what I mean? Like after I wore it, I did the review. I wore about four mils, let's say three to four mils over multiple wearings. I probably gave it for, you know, a mil a wear, let's say. And this is not, like I said, every mil is, is expensive on a $3,000 fragrance. And, um, you know, the more I wore it, the more I found, I kind of found myself craving this fragrance, believe it or not. Uh, I really did enjoy it. The iris in here is beautiful. There are some civet touches. Um, so for me, this and Great Britain and Diaghilev are my three are my three favorites. Uh, I in the review that I did of this of of Hot Lux or Roja, if you want to call it, I said I would never buy a bottle, and here we are. I have a bottle, but it fell in my lap, and it fell in my lap at a price that I just couldn't say no to. Is is what ended up happening. Um, and so, yes, this is an unboxing of Roja's Houtlux, and it's, uh, as you can see, it is, um, it is, um, you know, the, the gold flakes, by the way, there's a fragrance, let me show you guys, I've shown this before, but for those of you who have never seen, there's a fragrance called Lair Dior, Lair Dior, it's not a Dior fragrance, Lair Dior um, I don't know how to say it. My French is terrible. Lair D apostrophe O R. And this also had real gold flakes in it. And this was a fragrance from the 80s. Okay? Before Roja even dreamed of having a brand. And you can see the similarities. This is not something new. He says it's tongue in cheek. So when they ask, is that real gold flakes? He can say, why, yes, it is. But, um, the jasmine in here costs more than the rose. The ambergris in here costs more than the rose. That's the story he tells. Great salesman. Okay, he's a fantastic salesman. Whether I believe it or not, I don't know. Um, but I do like this fragrance. It's grown on me. I'm glad to have a bottle, especially at the price that I paid. Um, so yes, let's put it on the shelf. Let's put it where its new home is. Its new home will be right here. So there you have it, the uh, the two Rojas, that's the new setup. So um, I made room for it earlier, and now it has a home. So let's talk about the point of this video, outside of the unboxing, which is going to be Francis Kirkjohn's Seal de Gum. Um, 
Are you guys familiar with this? Because this is a discontinued Francis Kirk John. So everyone talks about the fact that when LVMH came, when LVMH came and purchased the house of Francis Kirk John, they discontinued this. It's called Absolute Pour Le Soir. This took me forever to hunt down. I'm so glad I have this bottle. Although, it's not my favorite, to be honest with you. Uh, because Absolute Pour Le Soir has this... There's this, there's a little bit of this strange sweetness in the opening that kind of gets me. Um, but there is something uh, about Francis Kirk John's fragrances outside of Eau Noir. I think Eau Noir is like an outlier for him. But most of the fragrances that he has done have this sweetness that really bothers me. And again, there's very few that are exceptions to the rule. I thought Absolute Pour Le Soir would be an exception to the rule, but it's not. Even though I like the fact there's some dirtiness in here, there's some pissiness in here, uh, there's some cumin in here, um, you know, that kind of stuff. I like all that, okay? There's some honey in here. Um, there's a little bit of frankincense, and there's some uh, benzoin and sandalwood and stuff like that. It's kind of this ambery, animalic, spicy thing that he does, right? And it has his DNA with that sweet, synthetic, almost like candied-like, disgusting, synthetic opening. Once I get past the opening, the first hour, once that's in the books, I love this, okay? Um, and I will wear this a lot more this winter once it cools down. But there's another amber. There's actually multiple other ambers that he's done, now that I'm thinking about it. One of them is a fragrance called Gaultier 2. I don't know if you guys know this one. This is also discontinued. So everything we've talked about so far outside of the Roja unboxing is discontinued. Uh, and they're, they're thinking about bringing this back, actually. But these came plastered together with two bottles, actually. So you got uh, 240 mils of juice. This is a 120 mil bottle. And um, this is a... Francis Kirk John creation through and through, okay? This amber. He loves making stuff like this. He absolutely loves it. Uh, and so Gaultier 2 is this, uh, almost like this vanilla cake-like smell, like this cake batter smell, okay? If you ever made like vanilla cake batter before you put it in the oven and let it cook, it has that sweet, syrupy, you know, vibe to it. This has that. And some people love that. Um, and, you know, for me, the mixture of the sweet vanilla, not like the animalic, natural Madagascar vanilla, no. This is like the sweet, synthetic vanilla just mixed with those white musks that Francis Kirk John loves to use. He loves using those white musks. Um, the, the, the white musk overdose of Francis Kirk John's creations, you know, you, you see the white musk overdose in so many of his creations, right? Like I said, I think Eau Noir is a outlier. That's the outlier. That's why that might be his best scent. But this video is about Sealed de Gum. And, you know, most people talk about Grand Soir, and I do have a decant of Grand Soir. I'll talk about that on my channel one day soon as well. Uh, whenever people say... What's your favorite? What's your favorite Francis Kirk John Amber, or even what's your favorite Amber? Invariably, lots of people say Grand Soir, and I understand why. It has that resinous, sweet, like enveloping, like you're being given a hug from an Amber fragrance, you know. And that's fine. I understand that. Um, but I actually prefer Sealed de Gum over Grand Soir. And to be honest with you, I wish I had a full bottle of Sealed de Gum over Gaultier 2. If anyone wants to trade me Sealed de Gum for discontinued Gaultier 2, I think they go for similar prices. Uh, do let me know. Actually, Sealed de Gum might be a little bit more now. But um, this is like $300 for a vintage discontinued just vanilla cake amber smell. Um, I'm not too keen on it, to be honest with you. But I don't sell my fragrances normally. But for something like this that I know I love, I would. So if you've never smelled Sealed de Gum and you go do some research on it, uh, basically the whole idea was that there was a department store in Russia. And I believe it was called Gum. Gum was the department store. And so they made Sealed de Gum for this particular department store. 
And so this is a 12 ml decant that I ended up scoring years and years ago, back when you could buy decants on eBay. Um, and I think this is my favorite amber that Francis Kirkjohn has ever created, which is a shame because number one, it's relegated to a um, specific store, like you had to go to the gum department store or the Francis Kirkjohn boutique in Paris, which I'm not going to Paris for that, I'm in Texas. Um, and they didn't sell it anywhere else. And then, uh, once LVMH got involved, they just straight up discontinued it along with Absolute Pour Le Soir. Okay. So I hunted a bottle of Absolute Pour Le Soir down. Luckily, thanks to my friend, Rudy, who you guys probably know, time to musk up. He found a friend of his who found a bottle and we sold it and we, and we made the deal happen. And I'm so glad I have a bottle of this because it's getting impossible to find, but I would even switch bottles with this. I would switch for a full bottle of this. I think I like sealed to gum better, honestly, um, because sealed to gum keeps that, it keeps the pieces of absolute pour le soir that I like, that amber that has a little bit of funk, not too much, but wearable amber. And I've got a wearable amber fragrance coming soon too. So unboxing on that, a very hard to find. It took me years to find this fragrance. As soon as I found it, I bought it instantly, you know, and I actually went through a, um, I went through an event where I tried to buy it a year or two ago and I bought it, you know, eBay let me complete the purchase. And then the guy came back and said, oh, sorry, mate, we must've sold it. I don't have it in stock anymore. And I was like, God, what are the odds? Uh, so I've been hunting that one for a year. This is also a very wearable amber and I've, and it's not like I'm doing this on purpose. I just happened to decide to wear it today. Even though it's 100 degrees out, I don't care. Like I said, I wear whatever I want. I work in an air-conditioned office all day looking like this. So whatever. Um, let me just do a fresh spray while I'm, while I'm just, uh, while we're prognosticating about the future of Francis Kirkjohn and his sense. Um, so for whatever reason, Francis Kirkjohn decided to do something different here. And he kept that vanilla amber musk thing that he loves playing with so much, but I don't get as much musk in here as I do in some of his other creations, but it's obviously there. He kept this vin vanilla amber thing that he loves so well, but what he did is he spiced it up with some florals, specifically a white floral. Now, you might be thinking, white floral, run in the other direction, right? The jasmine that's used in this, or lily of the valley, or God knows what, just does this magical blend with this peppery, this like pink pepper, you know. Um, I think there's other notes, obviously, that's not listed. But this peppery, rosy, uh, maybe there's little touches of geranium that go with the jasmine. I'm not 100% sure what else. Is. There's only four notes listed. Amber, pink pepper, jasmine, and vanilla. But it just blends to create one of my favorite amber fragrances. And I'm saying that about a Francis Kirkjohn fragrance, okay? And I'm saying about the about the one that I don't have and I would love to get a bottle of. I'm, I'm basically hyping something up that I would love to try to find a bottle of because I don't hold back just because I don't have a bottle. That's not fair. I saw one guy write a review or some somewhere. Uh, I forget which fragrance I was watching or reading, uh, but the review was, yeah, it's okay, blah, blah, blah. And then he comes back and it says, edited. I found a bottle. Now I can say what I truly think. And I was just like, Jesus, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, but I would love a bottle of this stuff because out of all the ambers that he has done, Gaultier 2, he's he's kind of, you know, fallen into this simple amber style with some of his creations. And he's done the same thing with some of his other stuff, like, you know, this lavender vanilla thing that I hate so much, Lamal. Ugh. Ugh, it's the worst. It's it's my least favorite Francis Kirk John creation. And that's saying something. Um he, he's fallen into this. He loves, obviously, doing this simple amber take. You know, he did it with Gaultier, too. I could easily see this being, you know, him turning up the ingredients to higher quality and selling this under the Francis Kirkjohn line easily. I could see him doing something like this for Dior uh, easily, right? 
Um, and so out of all of the ones that he's done, even the dirty one that all the frag heads love, Absolute Pour Le Soir, and I do like this, I must say, I like this much more than I like Gaultier too. This is the most boring amber of all time to me. It's just cake batter and, you know, vanilla. Someone said there's a little bit of resinous smoky labdanum or, or a little, you know, little bit in the dry down, but you really have to wait to like hour eight, you know. It's like eight hours of boredom for maybe a late dry down of something interesting. I'm just, it's not my favorite. I'll continue to test it and talk more about it. But I wanted to talk about sealed to gum uh, because sealed to gum, no one talks about. Uh, I, I don't think I've, I don't think I've heard anyone on YouTube that I've ever watched talk about sealed to gum. Wait a minute. That's not true. There was one guy. I think his name was Dimitri. Uh, I can't remember his name though. Dimitri Signature Scent might be his channel. He talked about this and, um, uh, he's spot on. I think this is the best the best amber Francis Kirk John has ever done. One of the best ambers I've ever smelled, even. Uh, it's There's just some sort of combination with the jasmine, which I usually don't like white florals. I'm in the Rich Mitch camp of white florals are usually a big no-no for me when they're not done right. But here, the jasmine is just done in such a way that it's just, it's mixed with those resinous notes in a way that I can stand it. Kind of like uh, actually, you know what the, the white florals are mixed with in this resinous way? The fragrances don't remind me the same, but I got the same surprise when I wore it for the first time. Uh, I tested this fragrance called... Um, I tested this fragrance from... Um, Papillon. And it's called Hera. She made this for her daughter's uh, wedding. And I actually did an interview with Liz Moore. If you've never... If you haven't had a chance to watch that interview, go watch it. She is absolutely amazing. As a person, as an artist, as a perfumer. I, I read the note tree and I thought, man, this is going to be like a floral. There's like jasmine and orange blossom and elang. But somehow she mixed it with the uh, ambrette and musk to create something magical. Still, still a floral fragrance, but something that I would totally wear and even smell somewhat masculine on my skin. She said the same thing about her husband's skin when he wore it, and I completely agree. Um, Sealed to Gum does something like that, but more amber. No ambrette, okay? Doesn't have that Dior Homme vibe, if you will. Uh, but it has this spicy, peppery, somehow um, on my skin, this stays very... It doesn't go super girly, white floral, traditionally feminine, let's say. There are just some fragrances that just traditionally go feminine for whatever reason, right? This one does not do that, um, at least not on my skin. If you're someone that traditionally would stay away from a heavy white floral fragrance, you can still try Seal de Gum. Uh, and the only downside is it's very expensive now, out of the blue. You know, now that it got discontinued, prices skyrocketed. Uh, so if you can get a decant like I did... That might be the best way to test it and give it some wears. I mean, I've had this decant for two years, and look, I mean, this is a 12 ml decant. I bet you I got 10 mils left out of a out of a 12 mil decant I bought years ago. Um, so as long as your decants are closed properly and they're good quality and they're not the cheap plastic ones, don't ever put your decants in plastic. By the way, make sure they're glass. If you put them in the plastic. Um, they, the plastic can actually affect the smell of the fragrance. So you want to use glass decants. You want to use good quality decants. You can find stuff like this on Amazon. You can get like six or seven of them for 10 bucks. It's an absolute steal. Um, and, uh, that's how you want to basically store them in these glass decants and they'll last, you know, if you can't find a bottle, you can do what I did and get a decant, but this deserves much more press. I mean, Everyone, when they talk about Francis Kirk John's best creations, I always hear Eau Noir. And I agree, Eau Noir is amazing, but personally, I prefer Sunshine Man. So I'm not going to spend the big money on Eau Noir. I'm not going to spend the higher Dior prices on his new re-releases just because he released them for Dior. And, you know, some of the stuff that I've smelled, there are some similarities as far as the generic synthetic openings go. Like, I have the same issue with Oud. So I bought this. This is another one I got a great deal on from Fragnanimous, actually. 
Uh, check his fragrance out. Lee at Fragnanimous. Not his fragrance. Check his website out. Lee at Fragnanimous is awesome if you're looking for like a Riz Ladore's fragrances, Bortnikoff's, Meleg. And he also has these partials for a great price. This is like, you know, 95, 98% full. I mean, look at that. And I got it for a third of the, of the retail price, right? Uh, kind of like I did with the Roja. Um, so check out Lee at uh, Fragnanimous, Fragnanimous.com for stuff like this for a good price. And he's, and I know I trust him. He's reasonable. He, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't mess around. He's a hundred percent honest and open. Those are the kind of people I like working with. And I like giving a shout out to, um, but this, the reason I'm bringing up Oud is this also has this very synthetic, sweet, synthetic feel in the opening. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or he's just mixing the notes together and you know, that's what it's coming to. I, I wonder if he's cognizant about it or if it bothers him or he's thought about it or he just decided he doesn't care when he creates it. But they all have that, you know, when you first spray, you're hit with this kind of disgusting synthetic sweetness, right? These, these especially. So these two, Absolute Pour Le Soir and the Oud and these two, especially, okay? Gaultier 2, and especially Lamal. Lamal is one of the most sweet, disgusting fragrances. I can't take it. I just can't. Um, Seal de Gum. I think if you blindfolded me and said, Ramsey, you will get a million dollars if you guess the perfumer. Take your time, okay? Don't just guess. Don't just throw names out. Take your time. Really think about who this is and what the composition smells like. I think I could guess this is a Francis Kirk John creation, but... This doesn't have that sweet, disgusting opening in a way. And that's what might make guessing this hard. Because that's why I was saying, I wonder if he's doing it on purpose or if it's happening by happenstance or whatever it is. Maybe the quality of the ingredients are even better here because this was an exclusive. I don't know. But whatever it is, you I don't get that blast of just, you almost have to cringe for 15 minutes before, once it starts to settle and then you can, you know, breathe again. I don't get that here. From the word go, it's beautiful from the get-go. Um, and the amber has this peppery quality. I know I mentioned pink pepper, but it smells like there's lots of pepper. It smells like there's many different types of pepper, but it doesn't smell so peppery that it's off-putting, if that makes sense, okay? So, because the amber keeps it so warm, uh, and the florals smell like a jasmine used or, or a lily of the valley used in a way I've never smelled before, you know, and maybe it's the combination, maybe it's the mixture of the notes, but this is Francis Kirkjohn firing on all cylinders. This is him staying true to himself by keep using the notes that he likes to use and keeping it simple. There's no Roja Dove note tree. There's four notes listed, uh, but still creating something amazing due to the quality of the ingredients. And quite frankly, due to his uh, ability to blend. I mean, this is impressive stuff, you know, and he didn't create Lamal in his 20s because he was, uh, you know, a nobody. He's gifted. He has talent. But sometimes I don't like the route that he goes. But, you know, for as hard as I've been on him over the years, and I have been, I mean, go watch my first impression of Absolute Pour Le Soir. I'm all excited. It's a blind buy, okay? Because everyone's like, oh, you like resinous, stinky, urinous fragrances. You have to get absolute pour le soir. And I sprayed it on. I was like, oh, what is this? It's so disgustingly sweet in the opening. Uh, but I've come to be able to tolerate that and, and appreciate it and enjoy it as the fragrance dries down. This doesn't have that. I have to cringe my teeth for an hour. You know what I mean? This just hits Indy 500. It hits the racetrack and goes. And... If you're looking for an amber and you have money to spend and, um, you know, you don't mind paying the markup because this is, like I said, discontinued, it's marked up and, and you um, want an amber with a little bit of a twist, you're okay with some florals, you're okay with an interesting twist on some florals, I would say check out Sealed to Gum. Um, it's, it's not overly complex. But what it does, it does so well, and I would actually like a bottle. It's probably the last Francis Kirk John creation that I would be interested in buying a bottle. I'm just not going to pay 
six eight hundred dollars for a bottle i just won't you know it's it's straight up larceny at those prices uh if i could find one for a couple hundred bucks i'm all over it i'd be all over sealed to gum um because this is a special amber and it's just a special it's a special amber and it might be his best creation it, it literally might be francis kirk john's best creation and that's really saying something um and I've smelled, I haven't smelled all of them, obviously, because I'm not the biggest Francis Kirk John fan. As you can see, I hate Baccarat Rouge. Um, it's, it's not my thing. Uh, a la Rose or whatever he released and Absolute Pour, Le Matin and all that stuff that's, you know, easy to wear. Amorous Ohm, none of that stuff does it for me. Uh, Apalm Ohm, it's just not my thing. Uh, aqua Vita Forte, none of that stuff. I'm not interested. Honestly, I'm not very interested in the house, but I am very interested in Sealed to Gum. Sealed to Gum is the one, this is going to be like the new amber that I just found, you know, that I just finally ordered. That'll come here within a week or two. I'll do the unboxing. Um, this will be the new one that I'll put on the watch list and I'll constantly check for it. And if I ever find a bottle that's not at a crazy price, I would be just ready to pull the trigger because this is impressive stuff. Yeah, I mean, the ingredients smell of the highest quality, even though uh, there is a little bit of that Francis Kirk John DNA, a little bit of that signature, that that sweetness, that that really disgusting sweetness that puts me off is gone. And and. I would love to know why, you know, why, why are they, why is that sweetness so evident in fragrances like this, but it's missing in a fragrance like this, you know, it's a very similar creation uh, concept, obviously, he's not doing anything revolutionary, um, he's, he's staying true to, this is obviously just who he is, he is who he is as a perfumer, um, Grand Soir is the same way, I think there's like three notes in Grand Soir, it's like amber, um, labdanum and benzoin and vanilla and that's it you know and and the note breakdown for this is very similar but add jasmine and pink pepper and remove the the uh the uh labdanum but for some this is so much better this this is like you know for the people who watch hype videos and who want a good amber and they go to youtube and they watch these videos and they get all hyped up and they go blind buy grand soir i would tell them to buy seal de gum if it was just if it was just available like Grand Soir, they discontinued the good one. They kept the sweet, you know, amber that I'm not the biggest fan of. But um, anyways, at least I hope I've shined a light on it. I hope you guys enjoyed the Roja unboxing. You'll be hearing, you'll be seeing me wear that stuff. Obviously, I bought it to wear it. Um, and uh, there's some more unboxings to come. Like I said, my my no buy July. Uh, and no, my no by August lasted like four hours and then I failed it. Um, but, uh, you'll, you'll see some new unboxings cover coming. I'm going to try to start another new no buy starting now and hopefully I'll last more than a day or two. But, um, I do appreciate everybody watching. Thank you very much for the support. Um, thank you for the feedback and the comments and everything you guys have done along the way. It really does mean a lot. If you've experienced Sealed to Gum, if you have, um, you know, if you have any experience, if you smelled it, if you own a bottle, anything like that, do let me know in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you think I'm spot on or if I'm way off base. And uh, let me know what you think of the, uh, of the Roja. So cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye now.